What's up guys, it's Brian here, and today I'm bringing you guys a review of the brand new Emperor's Throne Room Diorama from LEGO Star Wars. Set number is 75352, contains 807 pieces, retails for a controversial $100 in the United States. Now, I know in my analysis video, I said this. I will not be purchasing these anytime soon. I will absolutely not be paying $100 for this Emperor's Throne Room set. However, the set has grown on me a lot since then, and I didn't mind getting it for the full retail price considering all the May the 4th promos that were going on. Now, I actually have a little secret as to how I got this set. I got this set from Kohl's a day early. I got it yesterday, which was uh, April 30th. But I made a May the 4th order this morning that also includes the Emperor's Throne Room. So technically, I will have I will own two of these. But I will return the one I get from LEGO to Kohl's so that I will be able to get the VIP points and the promo. And I got to build this set early. So I will take that and I will deal with the Kohl's return when that comes. But that's my little secret as to how I got the set a little bit early. And I was able to justify it by getting the Death Star and the double points and uh, all of that fun stuff. So I'm happy to have this set now, but let's take a look at it and figure out if it's worth that $100. So we will talk about price and value later, but there is no denying that this set is gorgeous. It is a near perfect build. I really can't think of that many flaws with the build itself. The build process is fun. I've only built one of the dioramas before, and that was the Dagobah diorama. But with that one, you kind of build up from the base, and the base doesn't really get incorporated into the design at all. But in this one, it kind of does, because they have to integrate some Technic down there, just a little bit of Technic structure, in order to make the throne room actually, like, have that effect of the stairway going up. So the, the build is a little bit hollow underneath, but that's the way that it looks in the movie, because it's, it's, it's a hollow staircase. So they did that effect really well, and they integrated some, uh, some nice snot technique, for especially these side uh, panels here, these side floors with the officer station, which I know is not technically accurate, but it looks really good. So I'm not complaining about that too much. And around the back, it doesn't look that bad either because the window is a very funky build, which I'll talk about in a second, but they also tiled off some of the Technic structure that like a couple of these Technic bricks are just kind of put there in place to, uh, to hold the whole thing up but they actually give some nice detail back here and they tile off the Technic. So it looks good from this angle too. I kind of thought they were gonna tile off the bottom here, but honestly, that doesn't really matter so much as tiling off everything else, which this whole build, very tiled, very finished. Like there really isn't anything uh, capturing like this little frame of the throne room. There's really not much that they could have added to this to make it look much better. And of course, at the front, you've got the two prints, one that's Lego Star Wars, and then one that is the quote, I am a Jedi like my father before me from Luke Skywalker, obviously one of the most iconic quotes in all of Star Wars, so it really is fitting that this does get a quote set. I personally love the 40th anniversary Return of the Jedi brick. It is very well printed, and I like it quite a bit. I know that some people don't because it kind of throws off the symmetry, and like, I understand that, but also you could simply take it off. I feel like it, it almost looks a little naked over here without it, and you could, it's just held on with two jumper studs. You can tile that off if you want to. And I understand, if you like this look better, you know, once the 40th anniversary is over, you can take it off. But I personally really like that brick being there. Coming up to the front here, you'll see it is very tiled off. There are a couple of studs for figures to stand. I will remove the figures for now, just so we can appreciate the build itself. There are some jumper studs there, as well as some... Uh, some studs exposed over here and on the side, but you're really only going to use these front four and maybe these other ones on the side if you're posing figures. The ones back there you can use to make Luke kind of looking out the window. I will pose him over there just so you can see what I mean. So, you know, in the movie, he's looking out the window, worried about the fleet. It kind of makes more sense if he's like over here, so he's actually like looking out the window but you kind of get what I'm saying. There are studs over there where you can pose him, and I appreciate having studs over there. This uh, window section where the throne is, is nice and deep. You can see it's like four or five studs deep going from here uh, onward, which is very nice. The throne is an excellent build. I'm actually gonna remove the throne. It's on a spinny, a spinny plate, which you know I'm not the biggest fan of if you've seen other videos of mine, so I might modify that at some point. But the throne is a perfect build. I mean, if you just look at this thing and all the details and the building techniques they used, it's very impressive. It's a little hard to put together at times because, like, some of the pieces feel a little loose going on, but it's very nice. 
And I like the purple in there. It just gives a nice little splash of color. And yes, the Emperor does fit in there with his cape on, which is very nice. The cape does furl up just a little bit, but it's a cloth cape, so you shouldn't have to worry too much about it bending. But let's see. I'm going to do this in real time for you, just so that you can see how this is like. And there you go. See, it kind of folds up at his shoulders just a little bit. You can kind of see that there. But it's really not bad, and it looks very good. He looks very menacing in his throne. I mean, look at that. That is so good. None of the previous throne room builds have ever captured something like that. So that is just something that's very special. Now taking another look at the build itself, this whole paneling up here is kind of separate. You can kind of see where it detaches. It detaches right there. There's a single stud. You can see it right there, a Technic pin holding it in. And then there's a bunch of studs at the top that hold it in. So that's how you're, it's able to stay still. But it does kind of wiggle just a little bit, even though you're not really supposed to. But it doesn't really matter because it looks really good. Now, this back section is actually very challenging to put together. Like, this was not as smooth sailing as I thought it would be. Now, there are two bendable uh, Lego wires. You can kind of see what I mean, the, the bendy tubes. There's one there and one there, a big one and a small one. And there's this printed disc, this printed window piece, which is very, very nicely printed, just kind of sits on two of these little droid arms. You can see these right here, as well as um, these little pieces that hold it in, these little pieces on this one window that hold it in. That's all that's holding it in. It's just kind of sitting there, but it is very snug, so you don't have to worry about that too much. But these windows are very repetitive to put on. There's a clip on each end. So let's see. If you look over here, you can see one of these window builds. There's the bottom, and there's the, or there's the top, technically, when you're building it, and there's the bottom. And so the clips clip the two bendy poles together. And it can be actually pretty difficult when you're putting all of these on to get them lined up perfectly. Like you can see, I have an extra gap here. I have not a lot of gap there. Uh, it, it, you have to space it nicely. You have to like fiddle around with it and make sure that you get it nice and even. I think I also have it built like, I don't know what's happening with these wires, but like it's kind of, it's dipping on this side a little bit if you hold it like this. So it's, it's actually a challenge. It's a challenge to get these to go on perfectly and to bend the bendy pole to make like a perfect circle. But it, they do give you some Technic pieces down there that you put the bendy, the, the bendy poles into. So it's not too terrible, but it is a challenge. And honestly, I like a challenge in a Lego build because, you know, I built so many Lego sets over the years. So it's nice to see something fresh get introduced into the build. But as for the build, that's pretty much it. You can pose these figures anywhere you want. Oh, the, all, the other thing also is Palpatine's lightning is stored underneath here. You have to be careful when bending this back because it is a very back heavy set. Most of the bulk is back here. So it's just like, you know, it can kind of take itself, if you know what I mean. It's a little lighter over here than it is back there. So you just gotta be careful when bending it back, but you can get his lightning clips out of there very easily. But that's it, that's the build. I think it speaks for itself at some in some ways. Like if you take out take off this brick, it's very, very symmetrical. It's very satisfying. I understand the argument that the, the set should have had like two royal guards, like take one of these royal guards, put it over here, put another one over here. But honestly, I think it would have just crowded up the vignette a little bit. This guy also would have been hidden behind the brick. It would have crowded up the vignette a little bit. And I just don't know if that would have been uh, ideal per se, because it would have taken away from the, you know, the, the, the actual duel itself if it was going on up here. So I am not too mad about the Royal Guards not being included. I understand people that are, especially since the last Palpatine's throne room was $100 and it included two Royal Guards as well. But let's take a look at the minifigures that we do get because they are truly spectacular. Now, the first minifigure we will take a look at is the one that is not new or exclusive, but it is the best version of Darth Vader that they have ever done. Now, I personally am not, still not a fan of this helmet. I like the old one better, but, you know, old man yells at cloud, etc., etc. But this Darth Vader is perfect in every single other aspect, objectively speaking. He's got the arm printing. I'm glad they're making this arm printing standard. This leg printing is the best they've ever done, especially with, like, those lines that go down a little bit. That wasn't always an inclusion. His torso print is very good. Now, the face underneath, is the, the it's the same face from the Obi-Wan Kenobi dual set. I'm not sure if it's the same face from the TIE Bomber. I don't have that set. But regardless, there's really no need to upgrade this Vader figure. He's really as perfect as he can be. 
So I'm glad that they included the best version of Darth Vader in this set. I'm glad they're still doing arm printing for him. I'm glad this is going to be a continuous trend is giving Vader arm printing. Makes the figure that much better. Now the next minifigure we'll take a look at is an exclusive version of Emperor Palpatine, aka Darth Sidious. This is a brand new figure. I believe his torso and leg print is new. It is slightly different from the previous variation of uh, Darth Sidious. But let's see, he's got some good back printing back there, very simple. Uses the new hood piece, which works for Palpatine very well. I like that look of him turned to the side with the hood piece. Now, this is not my favorite version of Palpatine ever. He does have a double-sided face. Now, I personally like the Emperor Palpatine minifigures with the pupils. I, this is new for Emperor Palpatine, is giving him these fully yellow eyes, which kind of makes it look like he's blind in a way, because, you know... Other figures, like this Kanan Jarrus here, they have, like, the, the white eyes with no pupils. Because, like, this figure is rep is meant to represent a blind character. So, it's kind of weird to me to see that his eyes are totally yellow. Especially when, in the movies, you can see his pupils. And they are creepy. Now, I like this old version of Palpatine better because of the actual pupils in the eyes. It just looks, it looks creepier that way. If you ask me, I just think this, this figure is creepier with his eye pupils and so like this this one's okay i think if this one if this version of the figure came before this guy with the pupils i would like this version but it's not my personal favorite version of palpatine still a i'm glad that he's exclusive to the set for now it just adds another level of value to the set now if you've been watching this channel a while you know that Luke Skywalker is my favorite Star Wars character, and you also know that Luke Skywalker minifigures are typically my favorite LEGO Star Wars minifigures, and that does not change with this figure. A couple of very simple upgrades. His torso print is slightly different, but the new hair piece for Return of the Jedi Luke is outstanding. I wasn't sure if I would love it or not, but now that I have it in person, I want so many more of this hair piece to replace all of my other Return of the Jedi Lukes with this hairpiece. It looks so much better. It is a huge upgrade from the standard hair that we've been getting for Luke for years. And I never had a problem with this hairpiece. I actually kind of liked the way it looked, the classic Lego look. But this new kind of wavy, weird do hairpiece really does improve Luke Skywalker. I really do. I want this Luke for ev this hairpiece for every Luke I have. This is the Luke from the Ewok village. Looks so much better with this hairpiece. I'm going to pull over some other Lukes that could really use it. This old uh, Tatooine Luke from, Re from Return of the Jedi in his little Jedi robes. Look at how much better the Luke looks with this new hairpiece. It looks really, really good. Now, if you don't like this hairpiece, you might be cringing at this segment, but I don't care. I love this hairpiece. This is the one from the a uh, Dark Trooper attack set. That's a perfect version of Luke from Mando slash Book of Boba Fett. I really like this hairpiece a lot. I genuinely didn't expect to like it as much as I do, but this might be one of my favorite Lego Luke minifigures that they've ever done because of this new hairpiece. I also just love Luke's Return of the Jedi outfit. It's my favorite, like, look in all of Star Wars. I can't really explain it. It's my favorite, like, Star Wars costume is Luke with his green lightsaber and black outfit and his short hair like this. It's always been like my favorite character, Luke from Return of the Jedi. And this is the best version by far that they have ever done. Here's the instruction manual that comes with this set. A slight upgrade from recent instruction manuals in the sense that the rendering on the front is actually not terrible. And they do give you some little, uh, some little details along. I can't believe this is the standard for instruction manuals now. This is ridiculous. And here are the extra pieces that come in the set. A couple of little bits here and there. Nothing too exciting, but a couple of good little things for uh, mock building. And you do get a brick separator as well. So let's talk for a minute about price and value. You guys know if you watched my analysis video from a month ago when the two diorama sets were revealed, I really gave this set a hard time. And I gave LEGO a hard time, deservingly so, for charging a lot of money for things that are not really worth what the cost is. Now, this set over the last month did very much come around on me. And I realized how much I actually wanted this set. This is one of my favorite scenes in all of Star Wars. Maybe my favorite scene in all of Star Wars. And I knew I had to get it eventually, but I couldn't hold out on it. And I knew that the May the 4th promos with the double double VIP points and all the gift with purchases that they were doing was going to make this set worth it 
to get at release instead of waiting for it to go down. I also really want that Death Star set that is the May the 4th promo. That should be coming in the mail for me in a few days, and I'm excited to get that eventually. But that being said, my thoughts still stand. It's hard for me to assess the value of this set because I like it a lot. There's really nothing wrong with this set. The build is spectacular. It's a challenging build, even for adults and for people who've been building LEGO for a while, especially with this back window section back here. The minifigures are really, really good. Yeah, I personally don't love the Emperor as much as other people do, but most people really like it. I love this new Luke Skywalker minifigure, and it's good to get another version of a perfect Darth Vader. As well as having these prints down here, Everything about this is really, really nice. It's hard for me not to recommend you going out and buying this immediately, but $100 is a lot. The price per piece ratio is not very good, especially since a lot of the pieces are very small. Like there are more, like it looks like there's a lot of big pieces here. You can see a lot of big pieces, but there are a lot, a lot of tiny pieces in this set, especially when you get to like up here and you're building all these little, uh, these little blue things up here. That's a lot. However, so I say, if you can wait for the set to go down in price, wait for it to go down in price. I'm trying to get this video out quickly to also tell you that I think that this set is worth picking up during May the 4th week. Because they are, if you spend 150 bucks, which means you get this and you get like the, uh, the executors already sold out. My May the 4th order was this, the Brickheads, and a uh, Defensive Hoth set. That, that just got me over the $150 uh, price point, the $150 threshold to get the Death Star as well. And if you think about it logically, that Death Star set, which is one that I would have bought, would have probably cost around 25 to 30 bucks. And you're getting that set for free on May the 4th. So if you reduce that, if you subtract the amount of that the Death Star would have cost, apply it to this, that's how I was able to justify getting this set at release for $100. Now, once May the 4th is over and double VIP points are over, do not buy this. If you wait beyond this week, to buy this set, you need to wait for it to go down in price. But during May the 4th week, I think this is worth the pickup, especially with the hype around May the 4th and the hype with the 40th anniversary Return of the Jedi stuff. Everything is good here. If you want it, get it. However, I really think that if you miss out on getting it before the May the 4th promos end, wait for it to go down because this is a beautiful set. And I really think it's worth picking up at some point, but don't get it without some kind of deal or promo. And that's what I'm going to say about this set. So thank you guys very much for watching. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the Emperor's Throne Room diorama and what else you're getting on May the 4th weekend. This has been Brian from Watermelon Studios. Peace out, guys.